Right. Welcome, everybody. I think you can just uh, hear me out. We will we will wait for some more people and end the right time to start. I think my colleague and good friend Deve should be in. So we'll probably just try a little bit out uh, of checking his iPad. Okay. <laughs> All of you uh, can use the chat for your queries. Yes, uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much, uh, Suresh, uh, Yamuna, ma'am, all of you out there who are watching and listening. We will, I'm so excited, I'm happy. It's a session that hopefully most of us will benefit a lot from, especially with regards to a language or a subject like maths, where we're not very comfortable with. A lot of us find maths very challenging, though, but I think it's not the case.
Divesh, hi. Uh, let me just hi, Divesh. How are you? Welcome. Hi. Good. Great. Good. Are you there? Are people already joined in, but you want to just try it out so we can. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just hold on. I'm stopping the sharing here, and you have your. Just let me know if you can join in. Sir, sure. the rights have been given. Yeah. Is it visible? Yes, it is. Absolutely. Perfect. 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 This, this looks good. Then. Okay. I think, uh, Not a problem. Right. And give me a minute, uh, probably just on time. We will just start. Sure. Sure, Actually, sure. Uh, it's, it's wonderful to see a lot of, uh, you know, non-maths teachers joining in. So it's, it's nice. Thank, thank you, Kanta ma'am, Devoshri ma'am. I think there is uh, Shazia ma'am. A lot of people who, you know, I, uh, you know, I think I've borrowed your term. For maths being a language, and I told them just just come and hear this language out. I'm so glad. I'm looking forward to this. Absolutely welcome. This is wonderful. Right, everybody. I think we'll get started. Uh, we we almost are on time, and then I think Devesh has to leave as well. So. Hello and welcome very officially uh, for the third session of Creative Class Zooms now. The fact that we are doing virtually, I was just telling the other time my wife called me Zoom man. I'm literally living on Zoom classes. And this session is specifically dedicated to maths as, as a language, maths as a learning tool, and more importantly on how do we do maths online. You know, what we did last time, just a quick recap and letting others join in also, we spoke about a few tools that are important to teach online. We, we, all, we all agreed that teaching online for the new normal is not the same as what we do here. So we spoke about Flip Classroom and a, a fantastic book, One World School. We'll talk about that as well. And then we visited a museum, did a virtual tour of the Australian Zoo, and a lot of you liked it. And I said, whatever resources you see here, you use here, you absolutely implement it in your classes. Give us the feedback, and that will be the best thing we can do. We learned a little funda here about synchronous and asynchronous classes. And we took another tool, uh, Bitmoji. I've been using a lot of Bitmoji for creating my own. So you can have your own personalized emoji. So it's like your emoji there. And you can say hello to your classes. You can say welcome, submit your assignment. It's time. Uh, probably, uh, you know, that's what I do in some of the, the groups I am in now. And then we did a small tool called whiteboard.fi. No installment required, no login required. Just go to whiteboard.fi and every student who is uh, with you can actually use their own whiteboard and you can see all of them together. So that is what we were doing. Of course, a little bit of what we do in Sky Education. So we work a lot on life skill program, uh, primarily for students and anybody who wants to know more about the life skill program or even want this presentation for that matter, just drop us an email and you'll get all the details about what, uh, you know, just use it, the idea about, and I, I love anybody, any teacher who talks about it, just use everything around. We've got uh, almost 82 participants. That's really a very, very astonishing number, numbers all around. So why is math so difficult? Even before I introduce my very special friend, uh, what's, so if I slice this cake, and you can use the chat room if you want to, or probably, you know, uh, only the speakers are unmuted. So what are the different ways you can annotate or different ways you can tell how this cake will look like. Yeah. So a few books I've been reading around. There's a lovely book by Joe Bola. I'm going to share this book uh, in, in a later part about some great resources. Uh, I'm a linguist, not a maths person. Sorry, Divish. So I read books about maths. The same way I read books about exercises. If I exercise, patla ho jata main. <laughs> Right? So, so well, uh, I will not take, uh, you know, uh, too much of time. But I was reading this and there's a very nice way. When you slice a cake, I can call it a word problem and I can say the word half of it, isn't it? The same cake can be said as a fraction, it's half or one by two of it. The same cake can be developed into a percentage part of it as 50%. Just simple idea of cutting a cake. After this, uh, you know, example, you'll stop eating cakes at all. Or else if I were to do the decimal part of it, it is 0.5. The reason maths becomes so challenging for a lot of us is just same answer. I have four different variants to it. But that is what the beauty of a, of, a, of a conveying language is. That's the beauty of a subject where the same thing can be expressed in multiple ways. It's like Sachin Tendulkar. The same ball, he can you know, reverse sweep it. He can go ahead and, and do a cover drive. He can hoist it up over the, over the long, long on. And this is what makes maths so fascinating. So 
borrowing this term from a very good friend of you know divesh has taught this to me math is a language and and trust me any time i have asked him to help me even if for an interview for teaching the children or today's class he's always been a sport and a game i think he's a sports lover uh, uh, cricket will talk about that please join me in welcoming our guest speaker for today the founder of unmath which is very interesting divesh bhatija divesh is going to talk about math in the city the floor is yours divesh for the next half an hour you have them please go ahead thank you so much for coming in great thank you so much for the warm welcome and good to see so many uh, enterprising uh, educators who've actually tried to you know battle this whole situation in a very you know it's a manner now talking about mathematics how as already you mentioned that you know math is all about a language uh, there's this one unique skill set uh, which we've been doing when we do our offline sessions uh, so we as human beings are creative we always land up finding some sort of substitute if you're not able to do something in a particular manner so i fell upon a very old app which has been there for ages and uh, when i tried using it i mean i i was i was amazed to see the way children were actually responding the way they were looking at it so you know what i'm going to do is instead of talking too much i'm going to just actually do this i mean i'm going to make you all experience this in a particular manner so i'm just going to share my screen uh, so can you turn yes of your screen so i can absolutely, share my screen absolutely so we've reached the number 100 and unfortunately we can't have more people in so hopefully i'll share the recording after the session perfect i'm really excited i hope this helps all the educators uh, but before we start this uh, like uh, sir mentioned uh, there are all non math features let me clarify this is not only pertaining to math uh, you can use this tool for a lot of other subjects you can lose use to uh, build interconnection you can try to teach language you can try to teach geography history a lot could be done all you need to do is just try and use this free app by google called google earth i'm just going to share pull this out so i'm picking out a particular uh, screen yes here we go uh, i hope all of you can see my screen uh, i've logged on to this app uh, if you i mean when you download this app it's very simple you have to just go to a thing called as google earth you can go on this uh, usually you will have a search bar you can search for it when you search that particular uh, city that you actually looking for you get to see at the bottom points of interest in abu dhabi so i went around i said why not take children to uh, the yas island but in that why not take them to a place where they would enjoy which they of course can't go at this point of time but this would be the best way to at least give them an idea what this is all about so we go to yas water world which is a very famous uh, water park in abu dhabi now with this you get to see uh, Hold on, I'll just pull this out. Now, when we've already reached over here virtually, there is this option over here which says which you can see the human being over there. I click on that, and then it says you can tap on any of the blue points. If you can see a few blue points on the screen over there, I tap on one of the blue point. It's going taking me straight inside over there. Yes, I'm now inside the Yas Water World. Now I'm looking at all of this. i'm going to give you i hate talking too much so i'm going to give you a quick tour and after that i'm going to give you 5 minutes time you have to look at i'll keep rotating this all throughout you have to try and guess as many concepts of math you can actually see out here so we're going to try and do this as a quick interaction with everyone uh just to make sure that all of you can uh, see the screen very well uh could you please uh, just give me a thumbs up that's why i'll know on the chat box that you all can see the screen so that i it allows me to move ahead in the next stage yes we can i have got the chat so absolutely yes i filled out the chat as well so yes i think uh, if we can get all the responses yes people are able to see the screen okay so here we are this is the water world uh, i'm just going to take you around it it's just a basic water park like any other water park but allowing children i mean when we using technology why not give them a tour across whatever you can take them to water parks across india across the globe give them an idea what all is there so you're improving their knowledge but at the same time you're giving them an idea to actually observe so you can look at this all the water rides over there and the best observation skill set you ask them is you need to observe this entire 
clip, like we're going to actually do it with you. I'm going to keep rotating this around for about a few minutes. And after that, anyone who would like to volunteer could actually just come and say that what are the math concepts that you could identify wherein you saw the actual application happening over here. So we're going to start with a quick five minute uh, tour. I'm just going to keep rotating this. If anybody gets any idea, so can they unmute themselves and speak or they have to type only? So I think you're muted. We'll, we will let everybody type it so it's easier. Otherwise, you can okay. volunteer. Yeah, some of you can volunteer, but then let hopefully too many people coming in will not be able to manage it then. Okay, great. Sounds good. So I think let's do that. So I'm going to start. Uh, we're going to take a quick five minute tour. I'm going to rotate this around. So, you know, you can get to see each and everything very clearly. So these are all the benches where people are, uh, you know, usually relaxing after they swim. Okay, so we're getting, uh, Kanta Mem says roof is a pyramid. Yes, excellent. Zainab Mam says solar panels. Wonderful. So you're able to read the messages? Triangle, yes. tense, types of angles, geometrical shapes, shapes such as cones. And so I'm doing all my permutations here, adding few people, deleting few people, groups so that more people join in. <laughs> the match is everywhere. Vertical poles, height and distance. Let me, I mean, I can't resist this. Do you see this particular light out here, everyone? This is the actual application of trigonometry. Now, usually at this height, at what angle are you supposed to keep the light so that in the evening, the view is absolutely good. It's stunning. The light can reach to a maximum audience. It, it, it is only and only kept to highlight the water. It is not kept to highlight the entire other park. So that is a particular uh, concept of height and distance usually in trigonometry, but kids usually only relate in terms of sine cos theta, but it's not about only that. It's about real life application. The minute you start justifying to them that why do you really need trigonometry in the first place, it makes a huge impact for them. Uh, yes, we're getting a lot of other concepts as well, which says 2D, 3D shapes, height and distance, uh, concept of length, uh, asking them the measurement of the day tree and the poles, excellent application of trigo. I think you already mentioned that. Uh, some roofs are in geometrical shapes, uh, cylindrical tree, tree trunks, excellent. Javid sir says uh, cover and uncovered area. Javid sir is a, is a maths teacher from Delhi, if I remember wow. him correctly. So good, sir. Great, great. The use of shapes, uh, numbers of trees and branches, umbrella. Okay, uh, there is another quick thing. So when you look at these benches, they have to be an obtuse angle. Why can't they be at an acute angle? I mean, that's the kind of question we've got to ask them. Because if it's an acute angle, then a person cannot sit, right? Like he needs to sit and relax on the bench. So either it could be at a perpendicular or 90 degree or actually an obtuse angle because unless you don't do that, it won't make any sense. So these are the kind of questions we need to ask with the help of all of this, uh, you know, with the help of these kind of tools and these kind of math concepts. Uh, we have unit of mentioning water, area of the park, excellent. Uh, use of shapes, numbers of trees, benches, umbrella. Uh, Yes, we can't sit relaxedly if at all it's not, uh, you know, if, it, if the obtuse angle is not really maintained well, great. So I see that, you know, a quick five second tour uh, has allowed you to actually look at a lot of areas of math. Now, if we have to take a quick break, uh, I mean, if everyone has finished seeing this, uh, the artist, uh, I'm really glad to see that putting more color in our on our screens. I'm really happy to see that. If you'd like to add more color, please continue to do so. But uh, if at all you were trying to show something, I'm happy to go back uh, over there to if you were trying to highlight something. I want, so you want to 
there's annotation i can you can stop from your end if you want to okay great so well uh this was just a basic idea of you know visiting uh, a particular city or a particular park uh, exploring how are they actually going to understand this basic concept uh, you know the the idea of geometry becomes very very strong amongst these kids uh, without this uh, kids usually don't understand the application the uh, use of shapes so if you see uh, uh, there were there were a lot of shapes where we said this is only going to be for symmetrical shapes some would be asymmetrical the logic of asymmetrical and logic of symmetrical the the area volume of water because the, although this is a controlled water park they need to maintain certain amount of water level what are they going to do to maintain the quality of the water there are so many things which you can actually discuss so rather than focusing on a uh, a topic or you know a, a chapter in in math or in any other subject i'd rather say we we as educators use this time wherein we all have access to a lot of technology in front of us uh, get all these materials to kids take one one thing as a case study the more we make children actually understand from a case study point of view that's the biggest boon we could give as educators or as math teachers the idea of a math teacher uh, should not be to give them a good formula but to reach to that formula now this is the time when curriculum is not really going to be uh, the top most priority your curriculum will be taking a back seat there's no rush to complete portion but you need to do a certain amount of work in a given period of time and to engage with kids when you are in the classroom it's easy for you to engage with them but when you are online let me be very frank i could just mute myself or switch off my video and say there's some technical issue and not listen to you so as a student i can easily do that right but the minute you show me interesting things like this you're going to have the pull crowd this is going to be an opportunity for you wherein you don't become a teacher you become an influencer you talk about social media influencers you're going to be one of them you want the children to say I don't mind missing any of the class, but your class I want to attend. That is the kind of content you've got to build in when it comes to engaging with them. So I hope this small demonstration, which of course was not a very elaborate one, we could have done a lot of uh, visits to different cities, but uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, could not complete too much. I, as I as uh, so mentioned in the beginning, that I have another session to uh, take on do. But uh, in the meantime. what we can do we have a couple of minutes before i wrap up my session uh, i'll just uh, make sure that, that all of you uh, you know this is an app which is free you can download it on the android phone on your on your apple phone wherever you want to download it you can even use it on your pcs so it's not necessarily needed on your phone uh, i have actually practiced this with a lot of kids and made them write analysis so there were some kids who visited a bridge on say a, of their own city and they were trying to identify that uh the roads over there there was a highway and why was there a use of uh, parallel lines if those roads didn't have parallel lines what would happen obviously the cars would come and crash right because if they wouldn't have parallel lines the cars would not be able to move comfortably so there'll be traffic jam over there so there's even if there's a turn or a curve it's going to be in a certain parallel way only so roads will have to use parallel lines these are just a few examples uh if you have any questions or if you have any uh, you know thoughts you could put it on the chat box uh, or else uh, i'm sure sir will uh, leave a slide for me uh, wherein he can mention uh, how to reach out to me and i'll be happy to oh yes it's already here uh, you can reach out to me on this number as well it's active on whatsapp or you can drop me a, an email i'd happy to help you out and figure out but keep in mind as an educator this is an opportunity for you to grow your fan fair you don't have to teach you have to build your influence and you have to give them an idea that as an educator how you can tickle their mind not just give them information information is there everywhere you there's a reason why they still need you in a google classroom there's a reason why they need you on a zoom uh, class because if you're not there kids are lost so i think this is a perfect example that you know a flipped classroom will work when a teacher is still there so the importance of a teacher has grown 100 times over a period of time so i'm glad all of you are liking it uh, thank you um, i'm really happy to see these comments uh, sir if you don't mind uh, okay there's one question how do we go about with multiples well if we have to go back to the same uh, concept that i gave you earlier you could just look at the stripes that were there on all the chairs that you 
add away all the relaxing chairs and tell if each chair has certain number of stripes in it in a particular color how many chairs you'll need multiples over there i mean or the number of uh, you know if you have to keep two bottles you've got to keep two things uh, beside every table so how many there in the entire table i think that's one uh, way of looking at multiples another way that there's a child allow is a certain number of guests are allowed to go in a slide in a water slide but in a given period of time to ensure that there is no uh, collision between two people on the slide so there's a multiple that every minute x number of people have to go so you know based on the number of minutes you're actually operating it that is a maximum capacity this is a minimum capacity to ensure safety also at the same time so all of those things are documented we may not realize it because when we go there we go there from a fun point of view but at this time we can actually study every little aspect and everything has math in it so awesome. thank you once again for being a wonderful audience and thank you doubt sir for calling me once again on your platform always love interacting with your uh, audience no thank you so much sir so i can see ga maths global maths green math unmath so do you only speak math at home also and i asked sir <laughs> how does he make dalgona coffee you had to watch that interview with sir thank you so much sir so it was always a pleasure you put math on a very different level thank you so much and i'll take your leave uh, please guys continue and i hope uh, that you know you have a wonderful session with sir looking forward to interact with you in the future bye bye everyone bye bye sir thank you so much so we stay back and uh, you know the good part about i having good friends here is i have no idea what what i'll teach you on math so all your questions you can direct to uh, divesh and you know i i really admire is working a lot on cricket now along with you know ajit agarkar and and an, an entire industry around it i thank you for your messages to sir we take the math forward now and all of you who are here all the math teachers and the non math teachers i promise you that we will take a session where we have an expert coming in but also what can we do to make math interesting on an everyday lesson you already saw google earth so let me start with the way i would always recommend a classes the first two creative uh, classroom sessions had the same idea the format is the same we start with the circle time and after doing a lot of reading a lot of books that i have believe me i read nine books only in the last one week on mathematics i've never read so much on maths for doing this session of course the time is always a challenge and so is very importantly three lessons we learn engagement time and feedback is a great tool for any online session uh for me a great maths class can be a riddle so your circle time for maths can be a riddle every math class you can have one or two riddle one in the beginning one in the middle one in the end the children uh, of course i will share uh, chandra ma'am all the name of the books that i i have some pictures also of them and probably some are picked pick with me one book i refer since you asked a question is this book it's a, it's a nice book which says the smartest kid in the room you know everything you need to ace maths so this book is like a reference book i use very nicely done the illustration the color is very good or oh, you can ask a lot of things uh, kantham ma'am says you can ask about the amount of water they drink in the morning so here is a riddle tell me the answer to it and we'll begin with it uh lily is a lily pad in a small pond uh, a small pond out there all right there here rafia ma'am ashraf ma'am sneha ma'am oh she's a maths teacher by the way uh, i i really enjoy you know all the way you teach absolutely fine great answer all of you who told the right answer so even before i i finish my question are the bright students the first benches of the class i'll still wait for the last benches of my zoom class right do not worry if you do not get the answer that's not the point the riddle is you will vary the riddle i have got two three more riddles as i go ahead some will be an english riddle in maths and some will be a proper maths riddle right i did not want to start with a riddle where uh, jane is 9 years her father is three times more of jane the, it puts a lot of children off but thank you for answers that you share i will share the name of the books uh, alia ma'am and the point is when you double something it's just one day after right it's not the 10 day a lot of you got 10 day and i have to you know as a instructor and a mentor for today i have to tell you 10 the double it doesn't double at 20 19 and then doubles at this is simple concept of geometric pattern i can do an entire class only on the riddle and that is what a good math class you start with trust me your kids will love you for the riddles you do and it becomes even more easier if i can make the chat private and i can mute all the kid i can sit send your answers and just go about it we will start and do uh, some of you been insisting on some interesting math fact don't worry we have movies uh, some some ideas but let me start with some non math things a non math thing can be you challenging a student on something where i call the flip classroom 
in my last class i spoke about flip classroom not every day you have to take up a class and online i i don't know how schools think like it but i strongly think that three or four days per week is good too much for a child uh, even at a, at, a, at a higher grade level one day must be a flip classroom where you tell a child learn something and we'll do we'll do something around it one of the thing i have insisted my children to learn is chess you can have chess competitions and there are online tools for it you can do a real chess fun fact so any kind of thing for example let me start with a chess question here how many boards on a how, how many pieces of square on a chess board now what i can do is if i'm zoom, doing a zoom class in my next class i'll teach you some tricks around zoom and google uh, meet where i can make some rooms right absolutely how did you arrive at the fact is what is important so, uh, some of you sneha ma'am was right there ashraf sir was a javed sir uh, uh, you know yamuna ma'am 64 is the right answer a lot of time i as a maths teacher might be insisting on correct answers remember the fact the real mathematicians are enjoying the process of it than the answer so for a child if i ask this question to a child a child would have counted it but some child would have said look i saw the rows i saw the column and there were eight and eight in all i multiplied it for some child they'll say i looked at each rows and then i said okay if there are if there are eight here how many rows i've got i did it's 2 to the power of 4 or 5 right so the point i'm trying to do is you ask a child how did you arrive at the fact Thank you so much, uh, Swesha. We'll pounce on that. When I say pounce, that means that's the last answer I take. I can give them points for the answer. Then I can tell a TPS, think, pair, and share. When I give this question to a child, I'll tell them I know the answer is sixty-four, and I go ahead and tell the answer before, so nobody feels very proud with the answer, like how you did. But good, you all are doing good work. You're participating very well. But then, but then, yeah, Azhar sir says there are two hundred and four squares. He says you forgot the big square. you forgot the middle squares we saw internal one oh that's a different different level we are taking maths to but we can do a tps we can say okay 64 how did you arrive you will call each other you will do a whatsapp message to each other in 5 minutes i'm going to give you but then you will come and tell me how did you arrive the answer is more fun when you tell me how how you got it some of them would be saying i just counted all the squares you say all right is there a better way to do it and this is where you start talking about something interesting maybe you pull up a couple of uh, chess facts with them and which is where maths is also a language as i said it's a communication tool you know in china and china is not a best country right now to give example of but i read this book by joe bowler and she mentions that in china a teacher is not allowed to take up more than three problems in a single class fantastic isn't it you cannot go beyond three problems that means i cannot do six or eight ten problems i have to spend time on three and three is all i can do now imagine you know and it is written in the book that the best way to teach math is stretch it stretch a problem ask more things around it if sir was doing google earth i will not go beyond that uh, that resort in abu dhabi that he mentioned and my only entire zoom class or online class would be around that it could be a physical class also by the way or if i'm doing chess my entire match can be a chess a lot of you are starting your match classes or the schools are reopening soon and online will be the norm how about not even starting with match start with chess for the example and let's say all of you from different schools and different areas different cities rather it's fantastic you can do a you can do a fun fact checking okay what was the king on whom the chess was named about you know it could be it could be the name of the king charli magni i believe was the king that they took it what are the name of the different thing who's a bishop what's a rook and that's about it your kids will just enjoy it the fact that you used it or else what something else you can do is connect for another fantastic game they online connect for the online sudoku the dominoes or a rubik cube a teacher brings a rubik cube assuming a teacher knows how to solve it but fair enough a teacher says i don't know how to solve it can you tell me how to solve it there might be two kids in your class who can solve a rubik cube next day the next class will have a small demo 5 minutes she or he will become my teacher and they will help us solve a rubik cube trust me the next 15 kids will not understand what how to solve it but the two kids will love your class you got two believers so in terms of all the agnostic people you got two believers with you now 13 more to go see that is how a good math teacher does the trick sometime being a math teacher we think that eq level has to be over you don't have to connect with your kids i know a lot of you don't think that way but a lot of time we think who is your favorite teacher it has to be social studies teacher padhana to hai nahi usko all do you respect to all the social studies teachers out there i am a social studies teacher also myself uh, chandra ma'am how do you solve a rubik cube 
my daughter attended a small class in uh, i am in mumbai right now but there are lot of people around india but someone i endorse great team in chennai i don't know uh, atrix is the name of the of the team you can google them or you can uh, they are very active on facebook maybe just join yourself they were adults grown up people joining a rubik cube class i am always fascinated with rubik cube so my daughter solved it and they promise you in 5 days you'll solve a cube they did finish it my daughter solved it she's she's 10 years old she solved a cube it's not it's not throwing names so don't don't worry and and you know there are a lot of things she's not good at there are a lot of things she's good at it's a challenge i'm giving you these are non math yet math games it is nothing to do with math as in a curriculum math but it's all to do with math the, you know rubik cube i realize is about algorithm you learn the algorithm you memorize the algorithm and you're here in it so what i'm going to do in today's session is i'm going to tell you these small small tips and tricks i have some great websites i will take you and we will go together to the website and we'll start solving some together all right uh, this is interesting it's a small little uh, you know very small incident where a, a, a patient and a nurse their communication was going on the nurse mentioned that in one of the readers digest joke column she said that a patient came to me and she was in excruciating pain she was in pain bad pain so i quickly asked her ma'am please tell me on a scale of 10 how severe is the pain like one is like no pain and 10 is like very heavy pain and the patient looked at the nurse and said i'm sorry i'm very poor in maths you see that is a relationship that we have with maths the moment numbers come in we are like oh, oh we not doing maths but trust me you know i was reading another beautiful book which says maths is the new civil movement of the world you know civil movement like how mahatma gandhi and martin luther king led it he said it is compulsory for us to love maths maths is everywhere you see the corona numbers it's maths to, to algorithm is maths sensex maths meteorologist weather prediction maths cricket maths money ball baseball maths maths is everywhere you know we need to come up with and and all right uh, rafia mam someone who came up with the algo in the first place we can come up with on we can put older kids all right we'll talk about how do you introduce i'm not here to say that do coding immediately or do algorithms immediately i'm saying make maths friendly right uh no profession absolutely javed sir no profession uh, possible without maths and what we're going to do is half an hour is what we finished uh, so i wanted to just make it easy make it uh, essential how do we include maths as a everyday communication and i know some of my fantastic teachers are going to take up the online classes some of you may be taking for the first time so i have got two or three tools that i'm going to take right now with you not necessary you have to use all the tools but there's some great tools some tools i might be grappling with but what websites you can use to teach maths online remember we spoke about uh, whiteboard.fi it's a great one where you have to write it down some of you complain that i can't write you know you know it's very difficult to write with a mouse i always advise a teacher that even if you're using a laptop it's always easy to write on a mobile screen with your fingers so always open up another account use wifi whiteboard.wifi i will share that sir and you can email me and i'll send the entire presentation and all the resources at dau that uh, skyeducation.in i will send the email also to all of you and you have my number as well but the point is you can use multiple tool you can use a tool right uh, okay yamuna ma'am says executive experience on a scale of 1 to 5 absolutely fine maybe we will ask and ask you to do a rating experience of this session on 1 to 10 and or, or maybe if you want to have higher rating a small psychological trick make it lesser number so it's 1 2 3 people won't give you one then they'll at least give you two you know people are just being nice and polite to you especially your children who don't like maths we're going to go to two websites now and i'm going to show the website how they work and probably i'll ask you to participate in as i'm doing ahead the first website is called desmos so let me give you a small demo of desmos.com i'm stopping the sharing of the screen and i'm going to a different screen so i'm going to my I don't know if you can see my. I'm opening up desmos.com. Now this is specially for those who are using a lot of graphs. It's a it's a complicated website. I'm 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 announcing beforehand, but you might help. It, so anybody who's able to not uh, can you see desmos.com? Can you see my uh, website open? Can you just put something on the chat so I can see all of you there with me? Fantastic, fantastic. thank you so much so this is a great tool again but this is for higher learners this is where you want to teach parabolas and and you know uh, x y axis so i like what i like about this part is you can go around and you know these are also something that i can create as a learner tool 
So let's say I have got 40 minutes class. I can't teach 40 minutes all the time. I'll say five minutes. We'll go to Desmos and we'll draw whatever we want. Desmos has a competition. And exactly, remember I said, how do you convert agnostic into believers? You got two believers by Ruby Cube. You may get two more by doing this tool. So you can say there's a competition Desmos does every year where you can draw a picture on a graph. So I'll just show you. So let's say this was a picture by a girl called Kathleen, Katie on from U USA. And she, what she has done is this is a project that they've got and something interesting, something very interesting that I liked when the kids are doing something on those lines. So here there is, there's a picture. You can just choose anything. So, well, I, I'm just going here and it says draw something around. As I said, this is a little complicated for a lot of costs and excesses, but they just can fool around with it. They can just fool around. They can make any any kind of pictures here. So let me not go and complicate it more for you. But this is a small tool. I'm just sharing that with you. You can use this tool for a lot of mad drawing, just using the graph for drawing. On a side note, if you want to teach X and Y axis, Trust me, one of the best game, and this can happen only after pandemic probably, is uh, Scott, uh, sorry, is Battleship. Battleship is a great game for teaching X and Y axis, where you have the ships in two acrosses, you play a game across. There are versions online. I'm not recommending just go and play every board game online, but a great tool to teach X and Y axis is the Battleship. But the tool I really want to show you today, and I'm very excited about it, is a tool called GeoGebra. So again, just put on a chat if you can see GeoGebra, GeoGebra and all the tools I come across, I always ensure that I give you free tools. You know, there are many tools that are paid ones. I don't want to give you paid tools. Okay? And then say, Daud sir has a lot of paid tools with him. No, it's all free tools. The classes are free. GeoGebra, anybody who's used GeoGebra, can you see the screen again? One or two messages are very re reassuring. So can you just tell me if you can see GeoGebra on the screen now? Have I lost you? All right, good. Thank you so much. Uh, Okay, how do you find means of Desmos? Uh, well, I will leave Desmos to uh, you know some more experts, but I will take you and I'll I'll teach you GeoGebra right now. So there are free calculators, the resources, but what I really like about GeoGebra is I'm going down, and when you go down, there are these classroom resources, right? There is an elementary school, so you know, looking at my maths resources, I'm I'm touching what is easy for me. I'm just clicking on elementary school resource, so it opens up whatever I want to do. Uh, let me see if I can take up little higher grade three to five maths resource and let's say if I can take a little fraction all right so here I am into fraction I can take up anything I want uh, probably I will just show you a few more of the tools what I can do uh, if you want to do number sense fair enough you can do number sense here and now when I take these up I can go and play around with these numbers since I opened a fraction for you let me see let me go to a point called fraction guesser all right and trust me it's it's a lovely tool you will enjoy as I'm going to do with you. And this will be a little fun, hopefully. Right, very simple tool. What's the fraction here? Can you see the red part? Just tell me the fraction of the red part. I'll pull up the chat so I can hear you out on the chat. I can read out and others can just enjoy. Thank you so much, Kainath, ma'am. You're the first one. It says one by two. So let me say one by two. And let me see if it's right or wrong. All right, your guess says one by two. And I don't think, it, it helped me by giving my answers. All right. Let me see if I can answer. So I have to do a uh, tab. So say don't do, let me do the tab one. Okay, help me. Let's say I got it wrong. So what does it say? Uh, okay, press tab and not enter. All right, I press tab and I not enter. All right, fun minute. Tab. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I got it right. Let me reset it. Very simple. Okay, now what fraction is this? Can you tell me what fraction is the red part again? We will do, remember what they tell is don't three by four. Ashraf says three by four. Ashraf says I'm gonna write three by four as you say that. Three by four and press tab. Okay, sir, it says that, don't worry, it will always, even if it's small, it'll say too small or too big. So we are looking at, you know, we're looking at just a screen which says it's too big. Then you're suddenly getting an idea. It's two by three, Shruti ma'am, all right. There is, so I'm saying, Ma'am, it says two by three is too small. Very interesting. I'm enjoying my conversation. You know, sometimes it's fun to talk to math teachers and they don't get the answers. Or let me see. See, it's just the estimation, but amazing. Three by four, one by four. Okay, Shazia says three by four. Now let me see if that's the right answer. Uh, tab again. Oh, too big, Shazia. It says too big. 
right? But you, you know, you can't say no to your wife. So I think this is wrong. Yes, Shazia, they are wrong. Your Jebra is wrong. You know, five by seven. Okay, Shahana, ma'am, are we getting too ahead of ourselves? Uh, oh, you are just close. And now what I understood is maybe, maybe I have to divide my screen into much bigger part. Three by five. Am I not getting it? Uh, I'll just take one more and then we'll go ahead. But is it fun? So three by five is too small. You can just go to GeoGebra and do it all the time. Now, I'm just going to thank you for 100 math teachers. I did not solve it. Okay. Javits, I'm taking your last thing. It's a seven by nine. So what are your kids learning around it? Sir, it's too big again. Help me, please help me. Oh, the answer, there you are. So what it told me is, look, can you see? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Why did we not come? So do you want me to full screen? Most of you can't see the screen. Hold on. I think this is the highest I can do, ma'am. Uh, all right. Yes, Azar, sir. It's seven by ten. There you are. And I do the tab here and I got my answer. Wow. I mean, for a child, the very idea of setting estimation and doing a calculation, believe me, when I did GeoGebra, I understood the prediction they do in IPL. You know, uh, Australia, uh, uh, Kolkata Knight Rider had the chances of winning a 7 by 13. I said, why would I do 7 by 13? Why can't everything be in the same percentile? But this was interesting. Let me go, let me not just get stuck on this one because I can, I can reset it and there will be another interesting part of it. I'll go ahead. All right, so I'm going ahead. I'm doing next one. And I'm not sure which one will come. You know, sometimes there are some great answers. Sometimes there are very poor answers. It says, all right, I'm doing a tutorial download out there. So all of you who asked me for it, let me just, uh, so it, this is called a fraction starter. Why did I, okay, drag the blue dot to create a sixth now. So there are these blue dots here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let me see if I got it right or wrong. What do you think? Did I get it right or wrong? Oh, I just missed it. Did you see that? Did you see all of you? And most of you will get envy because Daoud sir is enjoying all the maths and he's not allowing us to do. You can go put GeoGebra on your screen and take this up on yourself. I can, you know, this is the beauty of it. Instead of every teacher doing it and showing to the student, a teacher can challenge the student and say, all of you open GeoGebra. We are going to this. You can just clear the link. So I can go ahead. I can click on the link. I can put on the tutorial and I can, I can just put on the chat right here. And I know when your class, you'll not have 100 students in your class. And then you can ask every student to go and give the answers. The best part of a great math class is participation, not answers. Remember that. I'm just taking one more of, of GeoGebra. And so you're only on the fraction. Well, this is a little more complicated one where you have to add all of it and give the answer. Let me go to matching ratio. Easy one, a very easy one. This is simple. It's not about higher studies. 3 is to 5. It says 2 is to 17. How do you find out? There's seven, some things are 17, some things are 2. Can you tell me which is 2 and which is 17? The ones who can uh, who cannot see the screen, I'm sure the recording will also be available. Some of you are having challenges. Which, which is 2? Okay, so baseball is 2, all right? So I think there are 3 baseball. Okay, there's a baseball. So I'm picking baseball up here and putting in the thing. And 17 are all balls, all right. Viola, your answer is right there. You're getting a right answer. Fair enough? Okay, I'm stopping the screen share. And white ball, yes, ma'am, that's a baseball. But perhaps I'm teaching a little bit of sport. But GeoGebra, this is all about teaching you ratios. 2 by 17, pictorically represented, becomes very easy. You know, if you like a tool like this, and that is the whole idea I'm trying to convey, use one tool and challenge a student to go on the tool, and this will become your de facto tool. So this is GeoGebra. I really like GeoGebra over Desmos. I did not like Desmos so much, but this is what I really enjoyed about GeoGebra. All right, we've got another 15 minutes of a session, 18 minutes. Uh, I will take some questions, but don't expect me to answer all of them. Uh, another tool which everyone is aware of, but what happens is what I'm trying to do in creative classrooms and making it different from uh, any other classroom, I hope all classrooms are wonderful, is I'm not telling you the names of the tool alone. Unless I have played with the tool, I've gone to the tool, I've chosen the tool, I will not recommend a tool to you. And it's not that listing out 10 tools and say, go around. Yes, thank you so much. If uh, uh, Madhya ma'am says it's fun and who is, uh, I don't know, are you a maths person, Madhya ma'am? I'll be very happy if you give me such suggestions. It's the idea that the fact that I always look at as a teacher, if you as a non-teacher, uh, math teacher likes it, then that means you might be a student in my classroom. And that is what who I'm addressing. A lot of us have spoken about Khan Academy. I strongly recommend Khan Academy, not because it is free again, a free tool, but the fact that Khan Academy helps you pace it up. 
again, the only challenge with Khan Academy is you will get lost. So I'll share a screen on Khan Academy. Uh, again, it's, it's a tool that you can use whenever you want to, but something again, I'll, I'll close my George Ebra. It was interesting, wasn't it? The project is gone. And let me, let me just go to Khan Academy here. Right. So here I'm on Khan Academy. All you have to do is log in as a, as a parent, and then you can add your children and your kids can have it. So here are my kids and trust me, I did a lot of Khan before the pandemic and then I did not do it after it. So I'm just going to one of my child. It will give you energy, energy saving also. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. It is good. So I'm going to Jewelry Hawaii. One of the one of my, my daughters who did a lot of Khan Academy before the pandemic. We've not started it now. We will start perhaps from first week of June, but then we can go to any resource we like. We can probably look at the progress, the profile. Khan Academy added English in the recent time, which is not what, what I'm going to talk about. But then there are these energy points. You see, she's got 16,463 energy points. You can actually challenge a child. Uh, it becomes a classroom activity where a child goes in. So another great tool that I strongly recommend, we're not going to do the Khan Academy, but if I can just go and show you, it is very well oriented each class. And yes, uh, but most of us are aware. Yes, thank you, Latika, ma'am. It's a great place for to going across it. So that is why I'm not spending more time on this particular tool of Khan Academy because most of us are aware of it, but we have never logged it. My only request to you and, and some of the teachers from Shepherd Park and Kenridge, I think I strongly urge you, I'm, I, you know, I'm not someone who forces people to do it, but if you have not done, register yourself at GeoGebra and register yourself at Khan Academy. Just register as a parent. You know, just go, even if you are a non-match teacher, see, you can be a lifesaver for a match teacher in your school or some other friend. You know, at least you can show off math skills and I can do a GeoGebra lesson. I know you'll not go every day, but Khan Academy recommend you that you spend time with your kids on doing it. So, so that's what we're doing. Uh, well, uh, this is, this is the Khan Academy's owner. Uh, did I get the right owner, by the way? I don't know if I got, uh... right. Now this is the, oh no, no, thank you so much. You all, you all know him. Okay. He's a Dabang hero. All right. So I just wanted to know if you're awake or you're sleeping in a maths class. Uh, who invented GeoGebra? I have no idea, Nikita, ma'am. But whoever did it, God bless him. Isn't it? Or her. By the way, we are so biased when you think of maths. So I picked up three maths books, all written by females. This is interesting. All right. Uh, I will share all the names. This is the real uh, founder and owner, Sal Khan, right? It is Salman Khan out there, not our Dabang Khan. He's also, by the way, doing some great work. I really admire him uh, for all the philanthropy work that he does. But today my concern is this man. You know, he started doing small things from his nieces. He got, you know, wonderfully attraction from Bill Gates who loved it. And today Sal Khan's work is brilliant. Ratan Tata is doing a lot of work. And I love the small, small quotes Khan Academy gives. This is a quote which is a favorite of mine along with the growing and learning one. It says, there was a time when Einstein could not count up to and said 10. Thankfully, we are born to learn. I mean, if there is any motivation for any one of us to learn maths, this has to be. You see, nobody was born Shakuntala Devi. By the way, there is a movie coming on Shakuntala Devi, right, by Vidya Balan. I'm looking forward to it. But we all have capacity to learn. It could be a language, it could be a, it could be a numerics, it could be, it could be a new, new, new cycling, a new tool, it could be anything we can do it. So, so this is what I, I really see Salman Khan doing very good. We spoke about his one world school concept in the book. And what I like about Sal Khan is by the time, you know, this book is almost written four or five years back and he uses a concept of flip classroom. That is what I'm encouraging all the teachers to do. Even if your class is on, if your school insists to have like 10 to 1, which is like ridiculous amount of time that a child will be spending like one period after another. But if you still have those classes, you may have a flip classroom where you say, look, I'm going to give you GeoGebra, go online, solve two or three problems. These are my challenges to you. Come back and tell me. Or go and find a fun fact about dominoes and then come back. You know, dominoes, those, those tools that you have. Or a chess fact as you talk about. Or give them a riddle and tell them, trust me, uh, don't Google it and you will have to, you know, give that liberty to your children. I don't know if you saw, teachers become very, very angry at students online. This will never work. I don't know if you saw the Jethalal uh, video and the tone of the voice. If you haven't seen, I'll put, I've, Azhar sir, uh, you know, our AMS admin agrees. I'll put that on, on some of the groups there. Uh, a child put a Jethalal picture on a, on a Zoom picture and the teacher was so angry. She, she actually challenged the child, I will remove you from the class. 
in my teenage class believe me when i do a teenage class i've got 160 kids coming in i've got kids booking uh, you know shane vaughn barack obama donald trump batman avengers all i do is i encourage them at the end of the day if a child enjoys your class that's important you know so do not do not get angry at the results all right another small psychological trip i remember i i promise you that i also add a lot of stories and psychology and 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 tips here not just tools i i gave you few tools i'll give you one more tool at the end of the class today but this is a great psychological tool for all of us trust me the easiest math subject to love is geometry you know why because geometry and and i'm a mindset coach it caters to the right hemisphere of your brain what i mean by it is geometry is spatial it's also colors it's also art and you see buildings you see arches you see parabolas you see domes all of them are math but they are also very aesthetic but unfortunately by giving those numbers we make geometry a little difficult so a small psychological tool i would love for some of you uh, we are yeah, okay a gray matters yes it's a small tool i learned here and i really like the tool instead of calling your quadrants abc always you know it's always abc a math teacher tried it by calling it names so a for you know maybe alicia or ajit or whatever b for biba i love that you know i coined the name biba because i think biba is much better and c could be kathy or chandler from a friend's part the moment you do that it becomes more personalized try it out you know a lot of things i'm sharing here uh, you know we've got 100 participants out here some of you may enjoy some of you may try this some of you may try that instead of saying the what is the distance between a to b you can say what's the distance between alice to biba or biba and chandler are planning to do something where a and c alice and chandler are not doing trust me your kids will relate to it better or some of them will relate to better my idea was converting the 15 children into believers ruby cube got me two joe jibra got me two chessboard got me two maybe alice and biba may get two more you know slowly you'll get children loving you because you're creating something fun for smaller kids it could be a for alligator b for baboon and c for cat for the lack of a better name right it could be anything that you can name them you know you don't have to stick to the rules for only saying a b c as a as a math part all right now last tool i want to give you before i i you know uh, become too much math savvy and we promise that time is very important i always ensure that you also spend one hour fruitful and then you go back to doing your household chores in the pandemic this is a little difficult tool but for those who have to create equations this is a great tool to create equations right uh, it is called kodak the name of the tool is codecogs.com and in codecogs for example if as a math teacher i want to create an equation 2x square minus 2x minus 12 you know uh, you know uh, by you know the denominator is 3x square xyz how do i do it so for some good math teacher don't worry i'm not going to solve this problem for you and all right right kanta ma'am alice goes to boston and there visits california all right i think you are do you getting it you will make a great math teacher so take up that new subject along with science in your school i am going to codex i'll just do one more tool online but this is more like a calculator sorry it's codecog.com so here you are let me just go to codecog and in codecog if you go to the website i hope you can see the website and if you can't you can always go and do it on your own right and thank you shazi you are a great math teacher you know my my wife is a great math teacher because she makes sure that my 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 spending is always in tune and her spending is more than that she knows the numerators and greater than signs so what i'm going here is i'm going to equation editor right here it's an equation editor and i told you an equation right 3x square let's give a random equation how do i write it so here is 3x to do a square there is a small button out here says superscript i do a superscript it comes here then plus 2y and and all i have to do is for being a denominator i you know do the whole thing i write it down here and my denominators can come in here can you see things here can you see uh, okay i should use annotation here one minute the only thing i have not learned a lot in my uh, zoom this thing is can you see the annotation here see whatever i'm writing here is annotated somewhere here so so that is what a great math tool some of you want to write an equation and this by the way can become a gif image so let me write still to uh, again 3x so 3x cube so to the power 3 and there you are can you see the annotation again i can download it i can put it in my uh, gmail assignments i can drag and drop it i can show to the kid on a whiteboard but instead of writing and taking a photograph and putting the photograph on on, on your whatsapp and then downloading on your laptop 
All I can do is I can use this tool. I can write any equation I want. By the way, it is not limited to maths. I can make chemistry equations, formulas out of it. Multiple things can be done by a simple tool called Code Cox, which is also a very interesting tool. And I hope you all, you all benefit from these tools. You all benefit. Each one of you can take up one tool. You can look at the maths and we can learn a lot from each other. This is what of Creative Classroom we've got. This is the Code Cog. Uh, dot com code cox.com has a calculator that's the only tool i like there are many other things in this particular website again a completely free website no installation no downloading just go online and use these tools right we'll end up this session with three four more slides of it conversing with you and i'll take up your feedback on what are some things you use for math so we learn from each other isn't it right absolutely thank you so much galaxy a20 another maths name uh, sorry i don't have the name but yes uh, absolutely, uh, as Thomas sir, if that's right, Sony Mon Thomas sir, MS Word is also easier perhaps, but maybe for difficult equations sir, this is much simpler tool, but absolutely fine. You can do anything you want. All right, I've been getting answers to the riddle. So my second riddle for thing is, what do maths teacher like to eat? All right, so I got answers from Rafia ma'am to everybody after that, pizzas. Okay, anything else? Can I push you to be more mathematical than pizza? What do maths teachers eat? Okay, I'll give you a hint now. Numbers, Latika ma'am. You know, Latika ma'am, math teachers love to eat brains. Kids' brain, by the way. They are, they are absolutely, uh, you know, cannibals. That's how the perception is. I'm so sorry if I'm making, you know, but Pani Puri, Sneha ma'am, I love that answer. Piece of cheese. Uh, somebody already wrote the answer earlier. I could not see your name, but yes. Uh, think about apple and you'll get the answer now. Absolutely. When I say apple, uh, some of you actually wrote the answer and, you know, it's wrong up. Perfect, absolutely. Uh, Amreen ma'am, it's the pie. Yes, Shazi, Shruti ma'am, there you are. Math teachers, you know, simple puzzles. No, not samosas. Apple samosas? Oh, I don't think they'll be very interesting. Javits, sir, math teachers love to eat Maggie. Yes, that's what they do. You know, the idea of a math teacher is the, is the movie I'm going to show you. So, the, if you, Suresh, sir, Idli? Oh, I, I'm, I'm enjoying your answers now. I, I'm really, Kasavas? Oh, the shape one? You know, all I'm saying is a great math teacher also creates a lot of bonding. Uh, one of the tools I found very good connect with a math teacher. So English teachers don't borrow riddles now, but there are many riddles in the world. And trust me, I collect a lot of riddles. I like a riddle. I put it down. There can be jokes a math teacher gives, but sometimes, you know, jokes always fall flat. Riddles never fall flat. Trust me on that. Donuts, I like the answer on donuts. But from Pi, there is a movie I recommend. So, you know, in a flip classroom, Assuming your kids can have access to a movie that way, or you can download a movie, but I string uh, most of them have uh, Prime and Netflix. If they don't have, you can do a movie watch together. But one of the movies I strongly recommend to watch is on Ramanujan, you know, something that makes us Indians very proud, The Man Who Knew Infinity. Because it was from Pi, the movie is not Life of Pi, Irfan Khan, a tribute to a great actor. But this is a great movie. I, I, you know, for math teacher also, sometimes we don't watch enough movies which are in our subject and our field. So that is why I wanted to end with challenge your kids to, if not watch the movie, they can watch the trailer on YouTube and everybody's access on YouTube. They can watch just a small snippet of it. And this is a great movie. Dave Patel has done a fantastic job. And a great way of seeing a movie together, if you're watching it together, if you're doing a, you know, a YouTube premiere, then don't watch the entire movie. Even in your regular classes, watch 20 minutes, do a lot of discussion around it. You can make a game around it, a quiz around it. And then you watch 20, 20, 20 like that. And that is how a good movies are watched. Uh, can anybody recommend some great maths movies as we close on some non-maths topic again with all the tools that we had? Anyone? Some good maths movies again? Let me see what answers I get. Mm -hmm. You can you send to everybody. All right. Thank you so much, Madhya ma'am. A beautiful mind. Fantastic. Super 30. Wow. Which is not exactly math, but Varun sir, I'll accept that. Imitation game. Absolutely, Javed sir. Tare Zameen sir, again, uh, ma'am is not. Uh, Shakuntala Devi hasn't come, uh, Fauzi sir. Oh, great. Uh, this, is, this is good. But beautiful mind, yes. Parabola. Is there a movie called Parabola? I think yes, Yamuna ma'am. That'll be wonderful. Three idiot. Okay, so you're, you're mixing education movies and maths movie. But I agree with you. Little man Tate. Oh, I don't know about it. But that's the beauty of it. We learn from each other. And I'm speaking them up. Pi. Oh, Latika ma'am. Pi is a great movie. Badla. Badla is a good movie for algorithm, isn't it, sir? Theory of Everything is a brilliant movie. One of my favorite actors. It's on Stephen Hawking. You can watch that also. Right. Hitchki again is more of, it's, it's in Tourette syndrome, if I'm right. Uh, Devoshri Maps is proof, wonderful. 
this is another movie that most of you mentioned. The first movie, Russell Crowe got an Oscar for it. A Beautiful Mind is a story about a professor, John Nash, and how he overcomes his phobias, his syndrome, and yet he does something amazing. All right, Shruti, man, X plus Y, thank you so much. There you are. See, I read your mind, man. Right, so this is another great movie about gifted children, X plus Y. So not necessarily you have to just show PK. Yeah, PK, is it a maths movie, sir? But I, I, I you know, I, I don't... Uh, Anything creative is acceptable. Imitation Game, another great movie about how the Enigma code was solved. Trust me, when my kids watch Imitation Game with that science teacher in school, they just love the idea of world war. They love the idea of codes. They love the idea of a scientist doing something amazing. So a lot of things can come in. You know, it's, it's all about how you choose that idea. All right, the last two things about, now let me go to the book part of it. There is a, there's a small video I did and at the end of it, maybe I can share that uh, link with you. Uh, I don't have a proper WhatsApp group, but some of you should just, I encourage you to, I don't want to make another WhatsApp group, but if you have a WhatsApp group, add me and I'll share the links there. Is a, is a, is a small story about a boy who loved maths. His name was Paul Eldros. Paul Eldros, Paul Eldros just loved numbers. You know, in fact, he called small children something like calculi, which means small kids in Greek. And he only thought numbers, numbers and numbers. By the way, his parents were maths teachers and they had a disease. So because of the disease, the boy was not supposed to meet anybody outside. Something like the pandemic, right? And all he did is he loved math. The parent got him Rubik's Cube, Domino Puzzle, chess board, math book, calculus, logarithm tables. The boy loved maths. And, and there's a small story. I, I mentioned about it. I can share the story about it. But... It is amazing. Thank you, Yamuna ma'am, for the movie name, Enigma of Space and Time. Moneyball, a great max movie, Nikita ma'am. Absolutely love. If you love Brad Pitt, you love Moneyball also. But these are some of the conversations I want a math teacher to do. Uh, Deboshri ma'am, Da Vinci Code, Dan Brown, my favorite. Yes. So what all of us are suggesting to each other as we're discussing this, he's saying math cannot only be about open a book. And this is a book I, I was recommending the other day, uh, in the more, uh, earlier when Debosh was speaking. And not just teaching but also having stories, conversations, you know, jokes around it, riddles for sure. And that is what maths is all about, right? Uh, Stand Up and Deliver is another, another great movie, ma'am, on uh, Denzel Washington probably is the actor there. Fantastic. So all of you are doing some great one. I will share the name of the book, sir, in, in a probably two books here, right there on the, you can take a screenshot. Please tell me and the presentation is yours. I would love to share that with you. Don't worry, you can send a check later to me. Maths again, isn't it? Bank and all. No, no, nothing, no money involved, please. These are two books by my favorite mathematician. Her name is Jo Bowler. The reason I picked up her because she's doing, she's a Stanford University and I work a lot on mindset. There's a book called Mathematical Mindset. Really, you know, these books might be a little more complicated than we think, but there's another book which I ordered and you can read online called The Elephant in the Room. Maths is the elephant in the room, right? We don't want to talk about maths, but numbers are everywhere. It's a very nice book. A lot of stories, a lot of thinking. I, I picked up the Sudoku puzzle from here. I took a printout of it before the pandemic and I played with some of the teachers and the parents we, we had. These, this is a way you start developing love for maths. And, and hopefully today you would have, uh, you would have you know, developed a little more love for maths than you started the session with. And that is the whole idea about it. Thank you all of you. Thank you so much. And this is a website again called YouCube. Uh, this is Joe Bowler's website. She's a teacher at Stanford University. There's a professor there. You can again visit that. You can see a lot of world out there. But this is what I want to give you about. Math is not a performance subject. You know, a lot of our kids ask that, when will I use this? When will I use algebra? When will I use trigonometry? And that is when we get frustrated. Math is a learning subject. You do math. Like how you do cycling or juggling or painting, you don't learn maths. You do maths. And hopefully that is what I want to teach you about. We, we, we want to, you know, idea about it. Uh, anything I would like to, thank you so much for all your regards and all the point. Anything you would like to add up, but what did you like about today's session? I'll give you two, three minutes or any question and then we'll probably uh, end this session on, on a very happy match note. Thank you so much, Rafia, ma'am, for the energizing word. It's, it, it's wonderful to have all of you here and I hope you all benefit and you can recap and, and yes, please ask me. Uh, Varun sir, you can go ahead and ask a question. Thank you, Yamuna ma'am, and all of you there. Right. 
So, so hopefully I got a lot of feedback and positive there. You can, uh, you can, you know, add to it. You can also connect me with uh, contact for any, we're doing some special courses for children on life skill. If anybody's interested, do that. The idea of riddles. Thank you, Latika ma'am. That's what we do. So I know she's a language teacher. That's what we love. The tools, the book, the approach. Thank you. Javed sir, wonderful. Let's make numbers a friend and not our enemies, isn't it? We are part of our numbers everywhere. Wonderful. I will share the recording on Sky Education TV. So whenever I will do that, I will, you know, we'll get the links. Hopefully most of you will send a message. I'll send a message back with you. GeoGebra is wonderful. Oh, yes, Shruti ma'am. It is a great tool. The more you use it. Oh, thank you, Ashraf sir. He gave me 10 out of 10. So that's very interesting. So, so here is a small course. If you think you, you have anybody about eight years, it's not for us, then you can join the Sky Education Life Skill Program or pass this message to others. But at the end of the day, this whole idea of what may we do with the creative sessions is making subjects interesting in this online session. We'll meet you again next week on a different idea. Hopefully we'll do the, uh, thank you so much, Madhya ma'am. The discount also is a maths puzzle to solve, isn't it? Right. If you use a UPI, you can do the discount, right? Israr sir, who is a partner in Sky Education, doing a wonderful work out there and encouraging and creating teams around. You can always drop in an email at daud at skyeducation.in or wherever you have come in, whatever groups you're part of, encourage them. If you are not a maths teacher, please make sure you share this presentation and the video recording to a maths teacher. Some kid somewhere will bless you and thank you for it, isn't it? All right. On that note, this was Divesh's session. And quickly on that note, thank you, everybody. Wonderful. Have a great maths weekend now. We are on time. The closing session. Uh, Thomas, sir, it's Dawood. Uh, I'll just write the email to someone if you wanted it. But uh, the presentation will be there. Bye-bye, everybody, and hope to see you again next week.